Today's video comes from the comment section of this channel. Fun Fun 8095 ask if I can try printing a Benchy with TPU 95A on my way K1 Max back here. Now he says he can't get a good one. It always messes up in the area of the chimney. He might he's thinking about trying more than one, like two at once to see if that works, which I honestly don't think it will if you're having problems with one. Well, you're just going to double the problem. Now, he also goes on to say he does a lot of gaskets and stuff with TPU without problems. But it bugs him that he cannot get a completely good benchy. Sure, I can do that. Why not? Now, I can also understand why somebody would feel, feel compelled to get a good benchy. While there are those out there that are anti-benchy for some reason... The Benchy is the original Jolly 3D printing torture test for trying out new printers or materials to see how well they're going to perform. Now, there's a lot you can learn from a 3D printed Benchy. Now, I have printed TPU plenty of times, so this shouldn't be too hard. I've done gaskets, tires for remote control vehicles, uh, even the front end and uh, the front and rear wing on this here dragster or printed with 95A TPU. But it hit me. Of all the TPU I've ever printed, most of it was done, none of it actually was done with my K1 Max back here. I've done it with the old Ender 3s, uh, the new Ender V3 SE. I've printed TPU with the Bamboo Lab X1C, uh, the P1S, but I've never done it from the K1 Max. I've had this printer for about two years. I'm not sure how I never printed TPU on it. So let's go ahead and change that. But before we get started, I want to thank today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is known for quality PCBs and assemblies. But did you know that they also do 3D printing? Just upload your design, select your material type, and let PCBWay do the rest. Be sure to check out the PCB Way 7th Project Design Contest with categories for electronic, mechanical, and STM32. Enter to win your share of over $6,000 in prizes. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional engineer, PCB Way has you covered. Okay, so let's get into it. The first thing we want to do is have dry filament. TPU is known for easily absorbing moisture from the air. I dry my TPU for about four to six hours in this dryer I got from Fix Dry. If you have an interest in a filament dryer, I have a link for this unit in the description. We'll have to make a few adjustments to the printer as well. Printing TPU isn't gonna work by putting the spool on the back of the printer and running it through the Bowden tube. Now, TPU is very flexible, like string and it's difficult to pass through the tube. Now, assuming that you get it through the tube, you probably won't make it past the filament runout sensor. We're gonna have to disconnect the tube from the extruder so we can print directly from the extruder. And since we'll be running the filament directly to the extruder, we'll need to make sure that we leave a piece of filament passing through the runout sensor or we won't be able to print. The next thing we'll need to do is come up with a way to pass the filament from above the printer directly into the extruder. I'll be printing this top mounted K1 spool holder. Now, since it is for the K1, I'll need to also print this roller that will, it's going to span the width of the K1 Max. I recommend using supports for the uh, spool guide. Now, I also printed this set up with uh, PLA and 20% infill. So let's get our printer set up to print TPU. Okay, so what we want to do is up at our extruders, we're going to have to pop off this blue clip, which for me is kind of hard to get with my fat fingers. Pull the blue clip off, then push down on the black ring and pull your tube. And that takes care of that. Now what we got to do, at least I like to do, is I like to pull this tube 
all the way out. I don't disconnect it. I just pull it out of the chain guide and I drape it over the back. That way it's out of the way and not interfering with the print. Oh. Okay, now one of the other things we want to do is we want to make sure that we have filament passing through the runout sensor in the back. So I leave my filament, even after retracting it, I leave it fed through there, just enough to get past the tube or past the sensor. So like if you pull it back, you'll see your lights off. You need that light on, that little blue light right here. So that way, when you go to send your print, you won't be getting, or while you're printing, you won't be getting the message that you're out of filament. So you're going to have to keep that in there. Okay, so once we have all the parts printed, we're going to take the bearings and just put them on the pegs. I'm going to drop that into the holder. You can take your TPU. I don't have some silica in there yet. Take your TPU, slide it through. They'll just go ahead and slide right on there. All right, now that's all there is to the assembly. Well, you got four M4 screws. They used M4 16s. I found that it worked better with on each side using four two M4 by 16s, and in the center use two M4 by 10s. Otherwise, it put otherwise it pushes through the bottom. But it goes together really easy, and it sets on top of the printer nice. It Let's take this off here real quick. The profile is designed to fit right with the profile, the contour of the top of the K1 and K1 Max. Uh, they put a lot of good work into this. So we're going to take this and we're just going to set it on top. Like so. And that's all there is to it. Okay, what we're going to want to do now is we're going to take our TPU and we are going to feed it into where our Bowden tube used to be. Now you want to make sure that you're in the unlocked position when you do this. Push it down as far as you feel it'll go. It, mine is actually stopping right now and I'm going to close the, the spring. Now we'll go ahead and we'll extrude some filament. Okay, so we've purged out what filament was still in there and we've extruded the new TPU. All right, so we got our filament dry. We have our printer set up to move TPU. Let's jump into Creality Print, slice up a Benchy, and print it, and see what happens. Okay, so we're going to set up our baseline print. I'm going to switch over to my K1 Max. We have a textured bread plate on there. And what we want to do is switch our filament to generic PLA. So click on where it says PLA up here. At the drop down, we're gonna come on down and we'll hit generic TPU. Follow our settings. Not gonna make any changes. We're just gonna run all of the generic settings. And that's all there is to it. So go ahead and center this up. We'll slice and print and we'll take a look at it all right so if you got a good eye and you pay attention to detail you may notice that i now have yellow tpu on the printer i was i started off with the black i printed off my benchy and it did not mess up uh the problem i there's stringing and everything but when i try to put it up to the camera it's just too shiny to see detail so I went ahead and I loaded up some yellow and I pretty much got the same results. Um, they don't look too bad. The chimney didn't mess up. The overture, which is the black 95A, 
it's just like I said too glossy to be seen well on the camera so I printed the yellow one which is bamboo labs yellow TPU it's also 95a but the results are similar so I feel confident in my results um, let's go ahead jump back into Creality Print. We're going to make a few changes to the generic TPU material profile that comes with Creality Print and we'll give it another go. Okay, so we saw what it looked like. Let's go make a few changes. And these changes are so easy, it's beyond belief. What we're going to do is open up our TPU material and we're going to go into Edit. And I did run a few tests on the generic TPU. And what I found out was everything was showing that the best settings for temperature, my retraction, pressure advance, max volume flow, all of that was right in line with what's already there. But I was still getting a lot of strings. So I start looking around and what I found out was on the settings override tabs. All of these, with the exception of the retraction length, I turn off. As far as the Z, uh, the lift Z enforcement, I leave that I leave that the way it is. They're already set to zero. Uh, it's not really doing anything. The extra length on restart, that I also left checked. It's just there. Um, Go ahead and we're going to save this and I'm just going to call it Overture 95A deal. And we'll hit save. And we'll go ahead, close this out. We want to come back up here. We're still set at the generic TPU. I don't want to change this to Overture that I just saved. That'll have my settings. We're going to go ahead and we're going to slice this up and we'll print it out and we're going to take a look and see how it does. All right, so you might notice I now have the black TPU back on the printer. I thought it was only fair to try it with both colors, uh, both brands. Now, both of these benchies look a lot better with those simple changes. I'm pretty happy with these results. Just turning off most of the override settings clean these prints up pretty good. To tune these further, I'm going to go back in and I'll be running a temperature tower, checking the flow rate, retraction, pressure advance, and the max volumetric flow. You'll want to minimize the retraction speed as well as the distance. Run the calibrations, but 1 to 2 millimeters seems to work best with the retraction. And the speed anywhere between, say, 20 to 30 millimeters per second. Uh, lowering your temperatures will help reduce the stringing, too. Again, run the temperature tower and dial that in. Now, with Bamboo Studio, I had some serious stringing issues. I mean, really, really bad. After looking at their material profile setup, I found that the max volumetric flow rate was set to 12 when 4 was a much better choice. TPU prints best at slower speeds. Now, something that simple made a major difference in the print. I hope you found this information helpful. If you did, hit that like button and let me know down in the comments. Smash that bell so you'll be alerted to new content in the future. Live your life one layer at a time. And if you haven't done it yet, please, consider subscribing.